Hello, I am Jill Dosick, and I'm pleased to be joined by Dr. Andrew Shannon from Lakeland Regional Health. Dr. Shannon is the Director of Emergency Ultrasound and Associate Professor at Nova Southeastern University. Hospitals are facing incredible challenges with staffing and revenue. At the same time, technologies like ultrasound that can be used at the point of care are increasingly important. This is especially true in emergency departments where credentialing of physicians drives billing opportunities. Today, we are very excited to share with you the experiences of Dr. Shannon and the Lakeland Regional Health Team have had with implementing ultrasound reporting solutions for their ED residency program. Dr. Shannon, hello. Tell hello, us about you? Lakeland Regional. Terrific, thank you. Tell us about Lakeland Regional Health, please. Sure, so Lakeland Regional is a pretty large um, academic medical center that's located here in Central Florida. Um, the uh, exciting bit about Lakeland is that uh, we have just matched and started our initial classes of trainees in multiple different uh, ACGME residencies, including the one I'm most involved with, emergency medicine, but also internal medicine, family medicine, general surgery, surgical intensive care uh, fellowship. So um, it's been a large institution that's sort of uh, been serving the community for quite some time and has only recently sort of jumped into the training game. And uh, that's why I uh, made my way out here to sort of help implement their point of care ultrasound program. Thank you. You recently joined the Lakeland Regional Health System to head up their POC ultrasound education or their residency program. Tell us about your program. We're a pretty big center. Uh, we have about 800 beds uh, total. We have about a combined visit census of around 200,000 a year. Um, we're a level one, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a level two uh, regional trauma center and a stroke and STEMI receiving center. So we've got a, a lot going on. Um, our emergency medicine residency is uh, like many three-year program and has uh, 15 residents uh, uh, per year. Um, all of emergency medicine residencies are required as part of their training to have ultrasound uh, training programs. Uh, and we're also at Lakeland offering it to the surgeons, the family medicine, internal medicine. So we've got quite a few people to keep track of. Uh, and so as a result, um, we're going to be managing uh, multiple studies uh, throughout multiple years across multiple residencies through the hospital system. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit to take care of, uh, for sure. Um, we have in the emergency department alone, um, eight different uh, ultrasound machines, some of which are dedicated specifically for access and procedures, but the majority of which are going to be used for physician credentialing and clinical care. Um, throughout the inpatient side, we have uh, six or seven machines also going to be used on the floors um, um, in, in those settings by folks who are going to be undergoing training in point of care ultrasound as well. So um, it's a lot of moving parts, I suppose. Implementation project started in April and you went live in July. How did it go? Um, like anything with that many moving parts, uh, it was, uh, you know, a, a challenge. Uh, there are a lot of uh, pieces to put together. Um, so our IT team and our um, uh, sort of uh, hospital operations team uh, got several meetings set up in order to prep for our go live. Um, so there's a lot of groundwork that had to be Laid. We were looking at multiple different users. We were looking at multiple different uh, machine platforms, so sort of across different vendors. And then further, we were looking at both the inpatient and outpatient sides, each of which had different EMR systems. Um, so that was a lot to coordinate. Uh, so it, 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 it took a, a few meetings, but what was nice is that um, we were able to sort of get together um, and using um, our encounters-based uh, workflow, which is what we sort of prioritized because it was going to be used mostly in the emergency department, um, we were able to get things uh, mapped correctly via the different machines um, and so that our images would be able to sort of flow into the workflow solution um, so that we could track them and sort of provide QA. Um, so I think that a lot of work went into the, uh, on the, front end, 
Um, and then the implementation, once we sort of got our feeds uh, speaking with each of the individual machines, it actually went uh, relatively smoothly from that point on. Very good. What motivated you to investigate a reporting solution for your program? Uh, <laughs> the desire to not spend all day working on an Excel spreadsheet now. Um, hmm. So the, the important thing with these workflow solutions or middleware solutions is that um, the, just the ability to manage the users, to manage their reports uh, uh, and their images, to be able to have those images right there available so that you can do the QA just while you're sort of uh, going through the, um, the images of the day. Um, and then getting that uh, quality assurance reporting or QA back to the individual provider um, in a meaningful time frame, uh, in a meaningful way, and then being able to run the summary statistics and sort of the reporting, sort of how people are progressing through their training from just a numbers point of view. Um, we knew that we would be needing a workflow solution to do that. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, again, a lot of moving parts to take care of, especially over multiple different residencies. What were your criteria for an ultrasound reporting software solution? Um, the, the big thing that we were looking for is because we had so many different pieces is a, a certain amount of flexibility uh, in terms of being able to um, talk with each of the different programs um, to integrate the different um, you know, vendor type machines. Uh, and then also, uh, obviously, to be able to uh, integrate it between the two healthcare uh, uh, EMRs or um, uh, electronic medical records. Um, so uh, I guess uh, <laughs> the flexibility was the big part. Um, the other bit was that because we were going to be going across so many different um, uh, clinical sites, including some outpatient sites, uh, we didn't want to be sort of limited by paying per machine. So there was some sort of uh, structure and cost questions there. And then obviously uh, um, uh, the, uh, the cost sort of per license or per, you know, sort of uh, uh, grouping was an important part of things. Um, just to sort of make sure that it was a solution that was going to be sustainable for us uh, as our program is going to continue to grow. And what obstacles did you have to overcome? Um, so I think I've kind of alluded to some of the, uh, the challenges in terms of the, the workflow um, side of things. The fact that we're, we're sort of trying to integrate across uh, a couple different EMRs um, and then uh, also trying to get the different machines to sort of map correctly. Like there had to be some just testing, go back to the machine, you know, uh, do a test case or see how that looked in viewpoint and uh, going back and forth um, from that point of view to make sure that when the user or the operator would enter information uh, into the machine, select the patient correctly from the active work list, you know, not yesterday's work list or not uh, you know, uh, the wrong site. Um, once those things uh, fell into place, uh, then uh, things started to work out uh, pretty quickly. One of the things that we noticed, uh, there are some unexpected challenges. Some of the machines uh, that we have from various vendors will have a, a limit to the number of patients in an active list they can query. So we had to sort of teach our providers, okay, you can sort of set yourself up, but you will need to sort of do an alphabetical search or sort of start searching with a few patient identifiers. Um, and once we found those nuances um, uh, and figured those out, uh, it was pretty easy to just sort of instruct people on what our workflow was going to be. Um, so getting the image from the patient into the machine, the machine into the workflow solution, and that associated with the uh, provider who's performing the study um, were sort of the obstacles, but that's what the workflow solution is for. So it worked out. Your hospital has been live with Viewpoint 6 for a few months now. What have you found most valuable so far? What do you anticipate being most valuable moving forward? As you might imagine, the ability to actually see the images, you know, more or less in real time with the with uh, the resident or the trainee right there, um, that's uh, a big uh, a big bonus. Um, our ability to sort of track uh, how these residents are going to be um, um, performing their studies and getting their numbers over time is going to be a big part of things. We're relatively new; we only matched our first uh, classes of all of these residents. 
um, just a few months ago. So, so uh, we're sort of integrating the residents, new machine purchases, and the workflow solution sort of all together. So sort of coordinating that uh, was, uh, was difficult. But what's nice is that um, the viewpoint is going to help us keep track of that, keep track of which residents belong to which resident group, family medicine, internal medicine, and then sort of over which year the classes are as we add more classes for each of these residents, um, being able to uh, quickly run reports and sort of generate some of those analytics for how well we're doing with our teaching. Um, that's that's the part that is where it's really going to start to uh, show its worth is the wrong word, but where it's really going to start to sort of uh, see why we need this kind of solution. What areas of the view viewpoint system would you like to see improved? Um, and the, the nice thing about that is as we're a relatively newer uh, program and we're sort of um, getting um, our, I guess, uh, idiosyncrasies down, um, some of the things that ha we've asked for, um, you know, the viewpoint's been uh, very responsive with in terms of coming up with uh, more sort of like customized work uh, worksheet templates. So the idea of when you're doing the ultrasound and having to generate a report, um, in point of care ultrasound in the emergency department specifically, uh, whether it's procedural or, or some other um, uh, uh, MS, uh, sorry, um, musculoskeletal ultrasound uh, examinations, a lot of those uh, haven't had sort of traditionally standard um, uh, worksheet or reporting templates. So sort of creating those um, uh, you know, some of it's me as a, a um, computer programmer, but sort of creating those and making those uh, a little bit uh, more accessible with the, for the residents, uh, I think is, is gonna be one thing that we're gonna be looking forward to. Uh, and then because it's an educational situation, there could be multiple residents looking at uh, one study. And so from the point of view of getting credit or uh, getting, um, uh, uh, the educational experience of being involved in a study, tracking that by adding multiple users on a particular study. Um, those are the things that I think uh, we're, we're going to be working on uh, next in terms of developing how we're using Viewpoint. Are you looking at doing barcode or badge scanning as well? Uh, everyone who does point of care ultrasound is trying to figure out how to avoid, how to just get your name at the top of the sheet of paper. Uh, but yes, so um, uh, anytime you're entering data, there's always a, a human error problem. And so the uh, capacity of viewpoint and the capacity of some of our machines to have that sort of badge in, badge out to identify the operator, but then also if for whatever reason the, uh, the wireless patient uh, list is down, if uh, there is an issue with sort of those emergent registrations when you're doing a fast exam, someone comes in sort of unexpectedly, um, that's where sort of the, the barcode scanning is going to be um, a big thing that looks like all of our systems have the capacity to do, which is something we looked at to make sure. Uh, and we're gonna hopefully take that as the next step uh, for uh, kind of the next upgrade for our, for our workflow. And do you have any advice for other health systems that are considering implementing Viewpoint 6? I think the biggest piece of advice, uh, again, is um, uh, potentially uh, generalizable when you're thinking about point of care ultrasound and maybe large systems generally. Um, but know who's going to be using uh, the, uh, the ultrasound machines, know who's going to sort of be using the product, um, understanding who might be interested accounting for all of those potential uh, cost centers or potential clinical sites that are gonna be using ultrasound and who their users might be. And having that information at the very beginning um, in order to get a sense of what your needs are going to be. Uh, I think that our effort to do that sort of helped us create a, a vision that sort of brought us to uh, the workflow solution that we chose and um, helped with that implementation is just being sort of clear about what you want uh, uh, from from the program. Um, and then obviously uh, always make sure that Biomed is on board because when things break down, they're the ones to help you fix it. Great. Finally, is there anything else you'd like to share? Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be a point of care ultrasound educator. Uh, I think it makes a difference for, our, for the patients um, and it's, 
as an emergency physician, I, I like doing things. Um, and so point of care ultrasound has been a big part of my career from that point of view. Um, and when you're thinking about trying to get feedback in a meaningful way to residents who are looking for education and looking to increase their skill set, um, the ability to organize that information is one of the most important things that you can have at your fingertips. And, and uh, that's, the, uh, that's the goal when we uh, are going forward with, with uh, this kind of a solution. Thank you, Dr. Shannon, for all your interesting insights. And thank you to everyone else that participated in making this discussion happen. All right, thank you.